I've been telling everybody for a long time, China's taking our jobs, they're taking our money. Be careful, they'll bring us down. You have to know what you're doing. We have nobody that has a clue. A plea from Donald Trump on social media last week after our stock market went topsy-turvy. Recall last Monday, the Dow dropped 1,000 points. It later recovered, but it's left a whole lot of people worried. Now, Trump says our markets were reacting to the economic problems that China is experiencing. So is China really to blame for market woes in this country? For more, let's welcome in financial commentator and the co-founder of the Quantum Fund, Jim Rogers, who joins us all the way from Singapore. Jim, it's great to have you Skyping in. I'm delighted to be here, J.D. So Donald Trump says China is the problem. Do you agree? Well, I mean, I, I hate to see a politician start looking for scapegoats, and, you know, this always happens when things go wrong. They, they blame foreigners. I mean, the, America's the largest economy in the world. How can he blame this on China? You know, the China American stock market has been going up for six years based on artificial money printing in the Federal Reserve. If he wants to look for the problem, he ought to go to Washington, D.C. Those guys have been printing staggering amounts of money and running up huge amounts of debt. We have an artificial ocean of liquidity. And it's going to dry up and we're all going to pay the price, including China's going to pay the price. To the general notion, not scapegoating, but pointing out that the deals we make with China give them majority control, allow them to, to basically get all the trade secrets, and then concurrently they're engaged in some active hacking in this country. So they're not exactly model international citizens or good neighbors economically, are they? I don't know how you know that. I don't know that. I know that uh, that's some of the propaganda coming out of Washington. The Chinese deny it. I have no way of knowing, J.D. Well, I, I, certainly I, you know, know we, I certainly know we in the United States do a lot of hacking and spying on other people, so I presume the Chinese do, too. It's very common around the world these days. All right, so uh, we will say that everybody's into hacking. Let's go back to some folks who might be called hacks at the Federal Reserve. Uh, speaking of the Fed, Vice Chairman Stanley Fisher was on CNBC, and he tried, I think, to shed some light on the issue of interest rates. We'll take a listen and then get your reaction after this. We haven't made a decision yet, and I don't think uh, that that uh, we should uh, make a decision. We're dealing with something which happened about 10 days ago, particularly the change in the circumstances. So, Jim, the deal is the Fed was talking about raising rates. I guess there was a leaked memo, and then we saw a response on Wall Street. Now, apparently, they're backing off for the September meeting. What's going to happen? J.D., I will tell you that's one of the major problems with the Federal Reserve. That's what happened in, back in 2008. Everybody called up and said, oh, my gosh, save us, save us, save us. Federal Reserve came riding to the rescue, bailed out the banks, and now we're all going to have to pay the price. They don't know what they're doing down there. They're academics and bureaucrats. You know, if you call them up and say the world's coming to an end, they'll jump on a horse to save you, too. Instead of letting the market determine interest rates and the market determine the economy, they think they're smarter than the rest of us. They're not, J.D., and we're going to pay the price. And when will that day of reckoning come, Jim? Uh, in a year? In five years? How long can they keep this at zero interest rates? Well, what's going to happen every time people start calling up and panicking, they're going to do something. I don't know what they'll do next. They'll buy more shares or they'll buy shares. They'll buy more bonds. They'll do something. And then we'll have another big rally. But, J.D., that's going to be the last rally. Maybe they can save the market one more time. But the world is starting to give up on all this artificial money printing. It's happening in Japan, Europe, Britain, and America. It's never happened before in recorded history that all the major central banks are printing a lot of money. This is not going to end well, J.D. This is going to end very, you should be prepared, you should be knowledgeable, and you should be worried. And I mentioned hacking, and you said a lot of countries do it. But the concern has been both China and Russia raiding uh, federal computers, not only for defense information, but for information about federal employees. If conceivably China and Russia have access to our market or financial databases, what could that mean for our economy? J.D., why would anybody care about it? <laughs> files on, on federal employees? Who cares about a bunch of bureaucrats in Washington? 
I mean, that's laughable on his face, if you ask me. Well, now, wait a minute. You, you don't, you don't, you don't, what about security risks? What about putting pressure on people in sensitive situations? They may be in the bureaucracy, but they also have leverage of information. And information, as we know, is the key to economic security and national security. Well, if that's happening, then that's a different story. But I know that we are hacking, too. I know the Germans are hacking. I know everybody's hacking. One thing's for sure, Jim, we want to listen to you, and you told us about the mess that awaits us. So here's the thing. Jim Rogers, three main things that need to happen to avert economic gloom and doom, if possible. Well, J.D., we cannot avert it. Maybe we can make it less. We've had economic slowdowns every four to seven years since the beginning of the republic. We're going to have them again. It's been six years since the last time, so start getting worried. Maybe it'll be seven, maybe it'll be eight years this time, but it's going to come. So what we need to do is, first of all, let interest rates find their proper level. J.D., in America, we're destroying the people who save and invest for the future. Interest rates are zero. A lot of people save their money, worked hard all their lives, and now they're getting nothing to show for it. First of all, you've got to stop destroying the people who save and invest for the future. You've got to let the market take its course, and you need to cut spending. You need to cut spending with a chainsaw. Uh, with an axe, at least, or preferably a chainsaw. And if you if you do that, then you could cut taxes. We would all have a lot more money in our pockets, and the economy would get better. And those words are words to live by, especially like the notion of using the chainsaw in federal spending. From Singapore, Jim Rogers, thanks again for Skyping in and offering your thoughts on the economy and what awaits us. We very much appreciate it. So, you heard what Jim had to say. What do you have to say in response? Send us your comments to NewsmaxTV.com slash comments. We'll be right back.